I think one of the biggest challenges on this movie, but it's also a challenge on every movie I've done with Todd, is to always be super ready to just be flexible. I can't think of another comic book movie, and I use that term quite loosely, that breaks the cinematic mold quite like Joker. Sure, we had Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy with some stunning cinematography by Wally Pfister, Into the Spider-Verse was a mind-bending experience, and more recently, The Batman has been the centre of attention when it comes to talks of stunning imagery, and for good reason. But Joker is unlike any of them. A whole new perspective was created for a character that we have known and loved for decades, and Lawrence Sher was the mind behind the astonishing look. In today's video, I'll be looking at a number of things, starting with the equipment he used, briefly talk about how he lit the film, his use of colour, the look that was created, how he shot certain scenes, as well as breaking down the look of the Murray Franklin show, as a lot more went into it than you would have originally thought. Lawrence Sher went through a number of scenarios with Todd Phillips on how they were going to photograph Joker. At first, they really wanted the expansive look of 65mm, and even though they had a budget of 50 to 60 million dollars, it just wasn't feasible financially. So they switched to 35mm as they could then retain the colour that film stock had to offer, and this was the plan for the majority of pre production. But then Sher had an idea. What if they used Ari's Alexa 65, which gave them the expansive look they were originally after? Sure, the colour wouldn't be exactly the same, but you can get extremely close nowadays. After showing Philips a comparison between 35 and the Alexa 65, they made the switch. But that wasn't the only camera they used, as Sher also employed an Ari Alexa LF and Ari Alexa Mini, with the Mini being used for a very specific purpose, but I'll get into that later. The Alexa 65 houses Ari's largest sensor, and with that comes an unrivaled image quality. It creates an immersive experience that other digital cameras just can't. The LF follows the 65 with a larger than normal sensor, and the Mini is just small in size, obviously with an incredible sensor too. Sher utilised a multitude of lenses in order to achieve the look of Joker, and in fact, I managed to find a post from the first AC of the film, Gregory Irwin, that shows off their, what he calls, cheat sheet of lenses. As we can see, they have a huge amount of glass to work with, with DNA primes, Canon what I suspect to be CNE lenses, 65 signatures, Nikon Nikkor lenses, Zeiss CP2s, Leica's R-series, Ari's macro lenses, and a vintage Ari 65. The most used lenses of the bunch, however, were the Canons, Leicas, and Nikons. Depending on the scene, Sher used the technique of lighting the spaces and not the faces. This is because with an actor like Joaquin and a character like Arthur, you want to give them as much free reign as possible, and lighting in a way where he wouldn't be able to cross a certain line would take away from the authenticity of the character. As for what lights he actually used, when shooting outside, Sher opted for sodium vapour lights with hints of orange and green. As you can tell from the first scene, there is always some hint of green in the cinematography, and this was done on set by Sher by adding a filter of green to the fluorescence they were using if they were inside. However, in a scene like the kitchen, he would just use them uncorrected for their natural cyan hint. Practicals seem to be used extensively throughout as well, which, as I mentioned before, is mainly so they could let Joaquin move around as freely as possible. As I've explained in previous videos, creating depth is something you should strive for in your work, whether it be through lighting, colour or blocking. Now, in Joker, Sher uses both lighting and colour to separate the scene, which, if we think about it for a second, is quite obvious now. We would often see one prominent colour, mainly orange or a greenish teal, with a background or even fill light as the opposite colour. I attack every movie probably similar to the way an actor or director attacks it. Just basically go through scene by scene and try to create an emotional arc then create for yourself visual rules that can help bring the audience along that emotional journey. The look of Joker consists of a lot of different moving parts, but they all just work so well together. But what are the more important aspects? Well, to start, we have to look at the influences, which of course are old Scorsese pictures. More specifically, Taxi Driver and The King of Comedy. 
both of which just happen to star Robert De Niro. And apart from the similar to an extent stories, there are aspects of the cinematography that feel quite similar. For example, in The King of Comedy, we see Rupert talking in silhouette to an audience, and we've seen that same shot in Joker, but this time it's in front of a live one. Now, the colour palette for this film is what I'd describe as an amplified normal colour palette, i.e. there are a lot of natural colours, but it's exaggerated. Because Joker is a movie in large part about opposite ends of the spectrum, two sides of yourself, the shadow and the light, and so those contrasting colours is a lot like what's going on internally with Arthur and that colour difference makes a huge impact on the scene. As I mentioned earlier with the lighting, Sher used a lot of greens and oranges in the film, however it still wasn't as vibrant as it would have been if they'd shot it on film, so they had to enhance it in post, and that included adding a lot more green. But what does green usually represent in film? Well, stereotypically, envy, jealousy, but also perseverance. Orange on the other hand signifies balance, and as they are almost complementary colours, it creates balance in the frame. It's also a nice change from the classic orange and teal look. Lenses are such an amazing tool to tell the story through images, which ultimately is the goal of any DP. With the wider lenses we are more connected to Arthur, we can get closer without feeling the claustrophobia that comes with the longer lenses. Now, Sher would often use it so that we could be physically closer to Arthur and wanted us to feel more connected to him. For example, in the opening scene where Arthur is running after the group of kids, we are constantly on a long lens, that is, until we see him lying on the ground and the title card pops up. Composition-wise, Arthur is often given quite a bit of breathing room. He isn't usually confined in the frame and is often only blocked by others. As always though, I need to touch on the use of centre framing as it's used quite a bit in this, and for what seems to be very different reasons. For example, a scene like this where he is standing on top of a car being cheered on, we are being immersed in his environment, but it also creates a sense of power in his character, whereas at the end, when we see him walking down the hallway of the hospital, it's used for impact. I couldn't make this video without looking at the specifics of at least a couple of scenes, and luckily, Sher went into detail with two of my favourites. To start with possibly the most iconic scene in the film, we have the stair dance scene. Now, Sher puts it as, he's not just going down the stairs which are symbolic of him going down into a darker part of himself, he's celebrating himself. And this is really replicated in the cinematography. We take more time looking at Arthur, we are usually below him, and this is a scene where he is in power and in control. There's an energy that evokes off of him, and as we move back and forwards with him, it's only amplified. As well as the fact that we are on longer lenses, which signifies that we are watching him from afar, yet still in his state of mind, he is usually in the centre of the frame, which as I've mentioned many times before, indicates that he is in power in this scene but it also creates a sense of impact on the audience. This is a huge moment and it deserves to be front and centre. The second scene I want to take a look at is the subway scene, and this is because it's sort of the turning point for Arthur. Now apart from the lighting, the most major aspect of the cinematography in this scene is in fact the use of handheld. From a compositional standpoint, we tried not to be at his eye level. The flexibility of the handheld camera work allowed us to be on that train and give it the feel of being live on that train, even though we shot it on a stage, but also be able to fluidly move around as the boys taunted him. There's so much that went into this train scene and it gets quite complicated quite quickly, so I'm going to try my best to explain it as simply as possible. Now this was a difficult scene from the start, as nowadays you can't just graffiti all over the NYC metro and you also can't film inside of the tunnels for security reasons, but you can fix both of those by just shooting on a stage. The major issue he came across though was the lighting, as he wanted that authenticity and what he calls hyper-realism. Now as they couldn't shoot in a real subway, how did they achieve the look of one outside? Well, they threw up some LED panels and a blue screen, took a ton of stills around New York City, subway tracks for influence, and that's what we see in the film. In order to get to that flashing light look though, Sher simply sat at a control, watching the video feed from the operator, and flicked a switch when he wanted any of the lights to do something. The Murray Franklin show is as big a part of the film as any of the other aspects, and it looks completely different to the rest of the film, with everything from the sets to the lighting. 
Now, Cher wanted it to be as authentic as possible to the original shows you would see back in the 60s, 70s and 80s, and took a lot of inspiration from Johnny Carson's show, which as we can see from the walk through the curtain and seating arrangements is quite prominent. Wanting to stay real to the time, Cher opted to only use old tungsten lights and other lighting equipment when shooting Murray's show. Now this seems to be for two reasons. Firstly, it creates that 80s TV look that they were going for, but also we quite literally see the lights when we are watching from the stands, so they couldn't just be the latest LEDs. And those cameras we see shooting the show, they were in fact Ari's Alexa Mini, rehoused so they could blend into the set. They also used local 600 operators who were also extras, as well as having a TV director to do a live cut whilst shooting. So what do we learn from Scher's cinematography in Joker? Well, a lot of it was based around Joaquin's acting and how they could let him do his thing without interfering. But he also wanted to create an atmosphere that we haven't seen in a comic book movie before. So he used the colour of the light and a wide set of lenses to his advantage, and that more than makes up for the lack of control over Phoenix. But would you have it any other way? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. You know what to do if you did. If I have a recommendation for an analysis, leave it down below. Thank you so much for watching, and maybe I'll see you next time. Bye.